Hello gems, Leah from Red Emerald Yoga. Today I'm here, we're gonna be doing a flip through and review. This is not really an unboxing because I unboxed this quite a while ago, but this was a special request by a viewer named Becky the Tarot Card Whisperer. So she specifically asked if I had this deck and I do. <laughs> so this is Archetype Cards by Carolyn Miss. It is a Hay House deck. I'll go ahead and read the back for you. It says Archetypes are ancient universal patterns of behavior that are embedded in what Carl Jung called the collective unconscious. Carolyn Miss has created a unique set of 74 archetype cards, each individually designed to provide the basic light and shadow attributes of a different archetype. The deck also contains six blank cards on which you can create your own archetypes. Included is an instruction booklet explaining how to use the cards to help determine which archetypes are most active in your psyche and how they can lead you to achieve greater insights into your life. The deck is suitable to be used by itself in conjunction with Caroline's book, Sacred Contracts, or with any of her workshops and seminars. Okay, so I bought this deck through Hay House. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, it might be available through Amazon. If it is, I'll leave a link for that as well. Um, I also purchased this book. When I bought this deck, they were out of the Sacred Contracts. Um, yeah, they were out of the Sacred Contracts book, and so I got this one. So later, I'm going to read you a little passage from the book. Anyways, let's get right into this, because this is why you are here. I really like the box. It's plain, just like, it looks like a brown paper bag, but it's actually not. It's like, um, I don't know, it's like colored. It's not just like brown paper bag, which would have been cool anyways, because I feel like the archetype, like, is kind of like the mask that you wear, you know? So that's like, that's what it kind of reminds me of. Anyways, this is the book. So I will read this because I know a lot of people are confused on how to use this deck and I will go into how I use this deck later. So see. guidebook to accompany the archetype cards. Archetypes have been around since at least the time of Plato, who referred to pre-existing ideal templates as forms. Plato believed that these eternal forms were reflected in material objects. The form of beauty, for example, is abstract and applies to all beautiful things. As different as the individual manifestations of beauty may be, a beautiful person, horse, or flower, the form itself never changes. Other philosophers referred to the concept in passing, but it was 20th century visionary Swiss psychologist Carl Jung who put archetypes on the map of modern consciousness. I love this beauty thing. I think it was um, from Twi The Twilight Zone, Beauty is in the Eye of the Beholder. I hope I'm not inventing stories. I think that's what it's called. But it's like this beautiful woman, you know, and she's like transported to this time and place where everybody's ugly and she's perceived as the ugly one. So it's it's really, um, yeah, it's interesting. If you haven't seen it, I strongly suggest you go watch it. In essence, back to this, <laughs> most archetypes are psychological patterns derived from historical roles in life, such as mother, child, trickster, prostitute, and servant. They can also be universal events or situations, such as initiation or death and rebirth. Along with our individual personal unconscious, which is unique to each of us, Jung believed that there exists a second psychic system of a collective, universal, and impersonal nature that is identical in all individuals this collective unconscious, as he called it, is inherited rather than developed, and it is composed largely of archetypes and mythological figures. Although archetypes are both ancient and universal, they become personalized when they're a part of your own psyche. What I refer to as your sacred contract, the agreements you make before you're born to learn certain lessons and work with certain people is embodied in a support system of 12 archetypes. Because this group of 12 patterns of behavior is uniquely yours, 
you should think of them as intimate companions. They provide the foundation for your personality, drives, feelings, beliefs, motivations, and actions. But archetypes are not passive entities floating around in the psyche, like old family portraits hanging in a dusty ancestral castle. They take an active role as guardians and inner allies, awakening you when you're in danger of falling into destructive behavior. The saboteur, for instance, comes into play when you're in a situation in which you tend to sabotage your best interests or to allow others to sabotage you. When you learn to recognize such a pattern, instead of ignoring it or denying its presence, it becomes your friend and helper. All archetypes have shadow manifestations as well as positive aspects. The rebel, for instance, can be a powerful force leading you to reject illegitimate authority and strike out on a bold new path of action. But if you let your awareness lapse, its shadow aspect can induce you to rebel against constructive, passive leaders, or to fall in love with the image and trappings of rebellion. Likewise, the queen can guide you to assert your power, take charge of situations, delegate authority, and act with regal benevolence. But the shadow queen may run around barking out orders, making impossible demands, and lopping off heads. To begin working with this deck, choose any card and study light and shadow attributes listed on the card and in this booklet. Observe whether you feel a close connection to that archetype and how it manifests in the energy surrounding you during the day. For more detailed suggestions on how to use this deck, see page 28. Goes into the four archetypes of survival. Determining your archetype, a partial listing of archetypes, self-examination. So this would be like if you're working with this deck for yourself, trying to figure out like what archetypes are coming up for you, or if you're working one-on-one -on -one with a client. Okay, so it says some, some suggestions for using this deck. Different archetypal patterns may manifest within and around you in different situations, such as when you're at home or at work, alone or with family, or in a romantic relationship or a friendship. Pick one or two cards and study their light and shadow attributes. Then observe in which situations those archetypes show up in you and in others throughout the day. Keep a journal listing of the archetypes that are most active in you as well as those with which you feel little or no connection. This will help you narrow down the list to the 12 most significant archetypes in your personal support group. So now she does talk about 12. Um, later on at the end of this video, I will be doing a reading, but it, this is going to be a five card reading that I'm gonna do. So that'll just show you, like you can go by what the book says, but you can also use this like in a standard reading, okay? Once you've decided on your 12 primary archetypes, including the child, victim, saboteur, and prostitute, choose one with the intention of observing its characteristics in your own behavior. Become mindful of how those characteristics express themselves in your personality and how you work with their power. Increasing awareness is the result of conscious observation of your fears and strengths, which are the essential influences in all your decisions. These cards can also be used in conjunction with Sacred Contracts, Caroline Miss's Journal of Inner Dialogue, and most Caroline Miss workshops. So I bought this book because I thought it was really going to be like a more in-depth guidebook for this deck. It somewhat is. She does go into um, like some of the guide. Uh, not guidebooks, some of the archetypes more in depth, okay? But she does not cover all of the archetypes. Oh, I just lost my spot. She does not cover all of the archetypes that are in this deck. So if you're going out and purchasing this book thinking it's going to be an in-depth guidebook, 
for this deck it is not but it is a handy resource okay so let's check out the cards this is the inside of the box and there are these extra cards I don't work with these but they are here. These are all the same. You get to make your own archetype should you choose to do so. You could draw a picture and then you would put your description. Okay, so that's just something that I have not done. Let's take a look at the backs. I really like the backs. The backs are gorgeous. And they are a glossy, um, they are a glossy cardstock, so you will get a reflection when working with this deck. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to lure, <laughs> I'm going to lower my camera so we can get a close up. So I'm not going to be reading these out loud. You can read them yourself. Please feel free to mute the video if you do not want to follow along with my random ramblings. If you enjoy <laughs> me rambling and just telling you little thoughts as they come up, please leave the volume on and it'll just be like you're sitting here having a cup of coffee or tea with me, checking out this deck of cards. So I know some people don't like having decks with borders or with keywords, but in this deck, I kind of feel like it fits. The images are rather on the small side, but I think it's kind of cool because to me, it's kind of just like, it looks like a window and you're just like peeking through the window at the archetype. These are arranged in alphabetical order and it's like that in the guidebook. So it does make it easy to find. So like I was telling you, I'm going to be doing um, a five card reading at the end of this video. Some of the ways that I use this deck is I will use it as a standalone reading, just you just using these cards. Okay, I have done that. And I'll also use it in conjunction with the tarot reading. Like if I'm looking at um, like a shadow that has that, you know, that keeps coming up that wants to be healed, that is demanding some attention. I'll use it like that. Sometimes to look at like energies that are playing out within a, a relationship reading, I'll use it for that. Things of that nature, or even like in um, like self-development readings. I'm sure you can use it for more things, but that's just how I've used this deck so far. some off camera. <laughs> I actually started doing, um, I started doing a review of this deck when I first got it. I was doing an unboxing video and then uh, my neighbors were doing construction and so <laughs> my dogs just kept barking and there was all this noise and I was just like, oh my goodness, forget it. <laughs> I didn't want to try to edit all of that out. Okay, my phone is charging <laughs> and we are recording. <laughs> I plugged my phone in and then I 
didn't push record. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know, 10 cards ahead. <laughs> and I had to go back. Anyways, we are good. I really like this card. The Exorcist. Well, just Exorcist, not the. One thing I was pointing out when we were not recording <laughs> was the shadow attributes. How there's two options, there's two sentences, okay, um, using humor to wound rather than liberate, period, denial of your emotional truth. So when this card comes up in the shadow, it does not necessarily have to be both parts of that. It could just be one. And also this fool is not, um, this is fool like, like a jokester, like an entertainer type of fool, you know, like the court jester, not the fool in the tarot. So it's, it's a different meaning. So when this, when this, um, this deck has a card show up in the reverse, you just see which situation is more applicable, which one resonates with the client or yourself. One thing that um, some people might not like about this deck is the reversal. Okay, for one, the back is not reversible. Like you can tell which card is upright and which one is gonna be reversed. Your client might not know because it's kind of like an abstract picture, you know, but here the words are literally gonna be in the reverse when this deck is reversed the card is reversed so that may bother you that might not when I read reversals um I'll say like oh you know healer in reverse and then I'll usually bring the card up close for the person to see especially if I'm doing a video reading and I like to put it in the upright just because that's how I like to um to really look at the card when I was learning. So I just figured, you know what, like my client's probably going to want to look at it in the upright. It usually makes more sense. And then so for me to read, you know what I mean? The description in the upright, even though the card is reversed, that makes sense to me in the way that I read. So you'll just have to see what works for you. And if that does not work for you, if that's not something that you do, then um, if you're not a good upside down reader, you might not like that. I really like this card, The Hermit. So since my camera stopped recording, I'm really not too sure if I said this in the first part of the video or when I was not actually recording, but some of the ways that I use this deck would be um, as a standalone deck. I'll also use it in conjunction with a tarot reading. Sometimes I'll use this at the end, just like drawing one of these cards, depending on the type of reading I'm doing. Other times I'll use this deck uh, in conjunction with a tarot reading to see like what kind of wound or shadow do I have that needs to be healed, especially in a relationship reading, like before I can have a healthy relationship. Or sometimes I'll use it to see like what kind of energies are showing up, playing out in a relationship. Like why are these people having difficulties communicating or expressing themselves to each other. Using this deck to identify the 12 types of archetypes um, is not something that I have done for a client. It's not to say it's not something that I would ever do. It's just like that's not something that's ever um, presented itself. It's always been in the form of a reading.
and I'll, sh I'll show you at the end of the um, I'll show you at the end of the video which spread I like to use when working with this deck if I'm going to use this deck as a standalone. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but my dog, he is sleeping peacefully. He's over there snoring. He's got all of his little toys around him. He's probably having the best dreams ever. I do really like the art in this deck. I think it would have been cool to have like a full size deck in this style. But again, it, I kind of like it because it's kind of just like, it kind of reminds me of like a peephole or something, you know, and then you're like looking through this little window. So the style of the card doesn't bother me, but I still think it would have been cool to have full size. After we go through the cards, I'll go through my little checklist. So I'm sure as you've noticed, these cards do go in ABC order and it makes them really easy to find in the guidebook. Again, I don't know if I said that in the beginning or <laughs> in the part that was not recording. So I'm just saying it again. Okay. So let's take a look at my little checklist. So we went over the title and the artist. Um, it was Archetype Cards by Carolyn Miss and the publisher is Hay House. Let's take a look at the packaging and the ease of opening. The packaging is really nice. I do like the thumb hole so it's easy to open and the inside is plain, which does not bother me. I think it's fitting with this type of, with this type of deck. The guidebook and size, um, okay, so the size is nice, like as far as like sizes go, but I would have liked a much more in-depth guidebook. Um, which is why I purchased this one. And it's not actually, <laughs> it's not actually a deep in depth guidebook. So this is like what I would have preferred. Something that deep dove into all of the archetypes, something thick and meaty, um, but that's not what I got with that book. Just got a standard glossy, um, 
glossy cover with foiled font here. And then this is foiled here, but this is just um, printed. That's not foiled. This is also foiled the archetype cards and this, um, the foiling is embossed. So you got a little bit of texture there. So that's nice. The binding feels pretty good still on this. I've had this deck, um, I don't know, one or two years, something like that. <clears throat> Let's see what it smells like after one or two years. After one or two years, it really doesn't smell like much. Maybe very, very, very faint, a little bit of ink. Let's take a look at the pages. Mm. They don't, they're not really see-through, okay? And the font size, I think it's okay, but I think it could be a little bit bigger. But the pages do feel good. They're nice and thick. Really good pages. Um, when was this published? This copy. So this one is 2003. Okay. So that was published in 2003. Um, let's go to description, organization, and spread. So there are no spreads in this book. You are on your own as far as like how you're going to use it. You can follow the suggestions in the book. Um, but that doesn't do much for like if you're using this as a standalone deck to read for clients or um, using it like an addition to a tarot reading. That doesn't really help you. You've, you're going to have to work with the deck and figure it out. The descriptions are okay. Let's just pick a random card. Here we have the rescuer. So let's go to what it says about the rescuer and see how this reads. <clears throat> okay, so this is it. That that's that's it <laughs> for the rescuer. So on the card in the light, provides strength and support to others in crisis. Acts out of love with no expectation of reward. Okay. Um, and then in the shadow, assumes that the rescued will reciprocate, keeps the rescued one needy. So I don't know if like, just from that description, if anybody from your real world life is popping into your mind, but for sure, um, I can see pe different people's faces like presenting themselves to me. I can, I, I see actual faces. Um, so in the guidebook, it says, provide strength and support to others in crisis. That's literally exactly what the card says. Acts out of love with no expectation of reward. Exactly what the card says. And then the shadow rescuer assumes that the rescued party will reciprocate. Aims to keep the rescued one needy. So all of this right here is exactly what's on the card. So I really don't think that's ne even necessary to put in the guidebook. That just seems like wasted space that could have been gone into this archetype a little bit deeper. I think that that's what that space should have been used for. And then it says, observe whether you have always sought to help those in peril, whether for altruistic or selfish motives. So I do like that there's that little snippet there. Let's go for one more. Let's see, we have dilettante, dilettante. I'm not sure how to say that. Let's see what that one says. So this one has a lot more writing. Here we have the light attributes. Delights in the arts without having to be a professional. Here, um, it kind of says a similar thing. It says a lover of the fine arts who never tries to rise above the level of an amateur. So it's basically the same thing. And then it says, alerts you to the danger of becoming superficial in your pursuits. Again, um, repeated somewhat here, both can alert you to the danger of becoming merely superficial in your pursuits or losing the love that drew you to your avocation in the first place. So it says, by extension, a jack of all trades, master of none. 
an amateur applies to the realm of sports or useful arts such as cooking and gardening. So um, that's what that means, dilettante, an amateur. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, oh, like amateur, like that doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. Like, let's say you, you know, love to bake and you bake really well but you're not a professional baker, like who cares? You know what I mean? I'm sure it's appreciated at parties and events, whatever, um, whoever you bake for. It's not a, it's not a derogatory word, amateur. And then um, here in the shadow, dilettante, dilettante manifests as a pretension to much deeper knowledge than you actually possess, taking your dabbling too seriously. It says, look for a pattern of delighting in the arts or other areas of endeavor without going very deep. And then here in the shadow aspect on the card, the shadow attribute, it says, pretension to much deeper knowledge than you actually possess. Okay. So yeah, that's how this guidebook reads. So it's not very in-depth, but I think it's enough for you to convey a meaning, to get a general, under, like, deeper understanding of what's going on in your client's life. Um, but I would have loved a deeper guidebook, for sure. Okay, so the organization, ABC order, very easy to find your card. I like that. Let's check out the cutting of the cards. So I did put this deck back in order for this video. And it's still in really good condition. Um, this deck is a little difficult to shuffle. But I mean, the cards are still straight. They still lay flat. It's a really good quality cardstock. There's like a little lifting here. Not lifting, but um, like just where it doesn't lay flat. But that's like after a year or two years of use. So it's still in really good condition. I do have like some little scuff marks there. Um, that's just from use. But this would be, like, I don't know, if you wanted to edge it, you probably could because it's shiny, glossy. It probably would not, like, like really stick to the surface of the card. It's something that makes me really nervous. <laughs> so I have not done it. Um, but, yeah, the corners are round. Not roundish. And there are no sharp corners on this deck. Everything is really smooth. It feels good. And... This deck has not lifted or chipped at all. The cardstock is really nice, even though it's that glossy, and sometimes they tend to chip or lift. Um, I don't have any of that with this deck. So this deck was really grippy and sticky in the beginning. It's kind of starting to glide. They've kind of been worn in a little bit, but I would not call this deck slippery yet. Um, let's check out the shuffle ability. So this is usually how I will shuffle this deck and it's a little clumpy. And again, if you watch my other videos, you'll know that I don't like to work with decks that are not well shuffled. So this took me, <laughs> um, this took me a long time to shuffle to get it in like an order that I would say is well shuffled and usable for me. So this is going to take a while to, to um, mix up. I'll probably edit a lot of this out of the video. I'm just going to be sitting here rambling and shuffling. And if there's anything like that comes to mind that I feel is like interesting or entertaining, I'll leave it in. But I'm just going to be shuffling and trying to get these back and usable. In usable condition. Let's let you listen to the sound. Oh my goodness. So on an overhand shuffle, let me just show you how chunky that is. Like that's really, <laughs> this deck is very, um, it does want to grip. Like, look at that. That was one, one slip of the hand. So it's like, yeah, you definitely want this deck to be an or, or not in, I keep saying order. I don't know why it, I keep wanting to say it, want it in order. It's probably because Becky, the tarot card whisperer, rearranges all of her decks after every use. 
And <laughs> so maybe like she's coming through like, no, you want it to be in order. <laughs> and I'm like, no, <laughs> it cannot be in order before you use it. <laughs> we always laugh about that, how we're so different in that aspect, but we just really get along so well. We just have a blast. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now let's shuffle this way, which is a little hard. Actually, I guess it's a little bit easier because it's been used for so long. So that does shuffle a little better than I remember. It's actually been a while since I've pulled this deck out and used it, honestly. Um, probably will use this. Um, I have a reading coming up for a client and I think I might actually use this deck in that reading. I feel like it is applicable. So thanks Becky for reminding me about this deck. Yeah. When I first got this deck, I could not shuffle it like that. Um, it just felt like the cards were going to bend and crease. <clears throat> but now that they're getting a little more broken in with use, um, it's kind of letting me do it. These cards are big. So I am trying to get some reversals in here. That's why I'm shuffling it like this. So like if you did something like which archetype have, like which shadow aspect have I healed, you know, and then it comes up with a card in reverse, well then that would actually be a good thing, you know, so sometimes people are like, oh, it's in reverse, you know, that's bad. No, not necessarily. It depends on the spread you're using or, you know, what kind of question you're asking. Sometimes you had to develop these shadows in order to successfully navigate the world you lived in, you know, what kind of environment you were in. Oh, my little siege bundle thing is coming undone. Okay, let's see. So let me continue going down my list of stuff. Um, is anything clear, blurry, or muted? I think... I'm going to have to actually go through. Let's find my favorite card first. Let's find my favorite card. So this is probably, I think this is shuffled well enough. We'll find out right now. <clears throat> Let's find my favorite card. And then we'll go over the list. So for this, I'm going by the art for my favorite card. Mm. 
Okay. It was a little bit easier because I worked with this deck, so I kind of knew like when I some cards would come up like that I liked, and I'm like, oh, I already know I have cards that I enjoy more than that. Looking at them, so let's see. It's not too big of a pile. Okay, let's see. Mm. Mm. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to take Slave Out and Samaritan. Mm. We're going to take out the Exorcist, even though I really love this card. Oh! And I actually didn't do this in my other video um, with all the noise. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't know if I could take out the Exorcist. <laughs> Let me see. Um, okay, I'm going to take out Destroyer and I'm going to take out the Advocate. I think I'm going to take out, I think I'm going to take out Shapeshifter. I really love Child Nature. But I also love the Saboteur. Like, just like popping her own hot air balloon, you know, like who does that? Um, I'm gonna take out Child Divine. Oh, who's going to be my favorite? Let's take out Liberator. Oh, you know what? Let me show you because I can see it. This card has a little bit of, is it showing? There's like a little bit of like creasing here. I just got it to show. There it is. Right there. There's a little bit of creasing. But it's really not bad for using these cards a lot and then a little bit of like edge lifting here not too bad the card hasn't separated but you can tell it's like been loved so they do hold up pretty well hmm, but which one has to come out <laughs> I think I'm gonna take out the hermit and child nature But I do love this card so much. I love all of the different textures. And then how she's in here and like she's textured. <clears throat> like the background part kind of reminds me, I don't know, maybe of something like Henri Matisse would do. 
And then I just love her expression holding the bunny. But I love how he's crammed in the house. Like he's got his little light in there, but like not shining it with the world. And there's just all this darkness outside. Oh, I really like this card. <laughs> okay, you guys gotta go. <laughs> so now we have the Exorcist and the Saboteur. Mm. This is something I did not think about when I opened it up last time. Having a favorite card. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to go with the saboteur. I think that image is just like so shocking to me. Like, why would you poke your own hot air balloon with a needle? That one's just so shocking to me. This is my favorite card. So let's see what it says about Saboteur. Okay. <clears throat> On the card, it says, highlights your fear of self-empowerment and the changes it would bring to your life. And then in shadow, introduces self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others. And then in the guidebook, it says exposes fears and issues related to low self-esteem that cause you to make choices that block your own empowerment and success. So kind of what it says here, but just in a different form. And then it says, when you make it an ally, you will find that it calls your attention to situations in which you're in danger of being sabotaged or of sabotaging your <laughs> or of sabotaging yourself and then it goes on to talk about the shadow saboteur manifests as self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others so literally what it says here and then it says everyone has this archetype so i think there's like i think there's five of them that she says that everyone has is it five i really don't remember because i don't use this as um, I don't use this in the way that the deck was intended. So let me see. 12 patterns. Okay, so here it is. Of the 12 archetypes in our personal support teams, we all share four. The child, victim, prostitute, and saboteur. Each of these is deeply involved in our most pressing challenges related to survival. They represent different issues, fears, and vulnerabilities that you need to confront and overcome as part of your sacred contract. In doing so, you come to see these four archetypes as your most trusted allies, which can represent spiritual as well as material strengths. They can become your guardians and will preserve your integrity, refusing to let you negotiate it away, refusing to let you negotiate it away in the name of survival. Keep in mind that like all archetypes, their energies are essentially neutral, despite the negative connotations of their names. Although the child itself sounds positive, variants such as the wounded, dependent, or orphan child have a clearly negative tonality. So it goes on to talk about it a little bit further, but yeah. So this is one of them that we are all said to possess. Okay, so let's go on to my checklist where it talks about um, the art quality. Is everything clear or are some blurry and muted? I do have to say this is really clear. I think that looks a little muted, kind of. This one, the color kind of looks, just looks weird. Like, I don't know. It doesn't look like some of the other ones. 
So I do not think that there's one cohesive theme. I think there's probably a few mixed in there. Um, this one kind of looks more like watercolor. So I don't really know if that's, I wouldn't say it's blurry. I guess it's just different. Yeah. I guess it is kind of clear. It's just different styles of art that's throwing me off. Where some are like soft and watercolory and not really um, like with crisp hard lines. And then there's others that are very defined. So it was just kind of throwing me off. Like all of these have crisp hard lines everywhere. And then there's the other ones that do not like here. So it's just a little different. And then that coloring is like just strange. And then most of them look like people, but then these ones look blue. Like, why are they blue? I don't know, but whatever. It doesn't bother me. It's just, <laughs> it's not cohesive <laughs> for me. Um, let me see. Does it remind me of a deck that I have? I can't say that it does. Is it for newbies? Yes, I would say a newbie could use this deck, but it would have to be, you would have to really spend time with this deck. It's like, I kind of struggled figuring out like, how am I gonna use this deck? And then I settled on this way and I do like it, it works for me. And I hope it works for you too. So I do believe that newbies could use this deck. I keep this deck in the box and I keep it with my Oracle cards. Who might like it? Who might not like it? I think anybody who's into psychology, who's into Carl Jung's philosophies, um, anybody who's interested in shadow work, um, I think that this would be good for tarot, oracle readers, um, energy healers, therapists, um, maybe even teachers. Like if you're working you know, with students, <laughs> like in a K through 12 school, even college, you know, like it would be good to see these archetypes and just like recognize how these are playing out, you know, in your, in your class. Um, coaches, I think this would be good for coaches. Maybe it would help you like adapt your coaching style. Um, and I, I'm talking like athletic coaches, but obviously, life coaches and things of that nature too, but definitely um, athletic coaches for sure. I will leave a link in the description where you can purchase this. Oh, who might not like it? Who might not like this deck? People who want it to have a cohesive theme, people who hate borders, people who do not like when they can see that the deck is showing up in the reverse. Um, cards, not deck. People who don't like this little like window, they want the full image to be there. People who don't like keywords on the deck. Um, I don't think that the images are offensive. Uh, we got people from different age groups. We have people from different ethnicities um, who might who might not like it. People who are easily triggered. Uh, people who don't want to look at their shadows. Those people <laughs> are probably not ready for this work. And that's not a dig to them. It's just. It's just a fact. That's just some people are, are not ready or not willing to work on their shadows. And everybody's entitled to make their own decisions as far as that goes. Um, did I cover everything? Yes, I did. Okay, so let's do a sample reading. So I'm just going to give these a couple more shuffles and we will do a sample reading. This is not going to be a reading for anybody specifically. It's just going to be something that I can read. So I'm just going to ask the cards, give me something that I can read <clears throat> to show this sample spread. Okay. Might have to scoot my camera back just a little bit. Before I get into that, I do want to read from the book. This is page 25 of Carolyn Mrs. Archetypes book. 
So this says, as you go through the book, it's important to keep in mind that archetypes are creatures of the psyche. They're not literal, but mystical. Archetypes are impossible to define with precision because archetypal patterns morph to fit each individual. Two people may have the caretaker archetype, but the manner in which the archetype expresses itself will differ according to the contours and demands of each person's life. Once you learn to identify an archetypal pattern, however, you will be able to look at your own life or someone else's and see the subtle ways in which the archetype influences that life. Archetypes may be impossible to define, yet they are always recognizable. Oops, wait, I think I skipped a page. Okay. Once you connect with an archetype that you know is genuinely you, it will inspire you to find out about other archetypes that may be influencing your life. Connecting with an archetype is a bridge to your true self, to who you really are. You are far more than your personality, more than your habits, more than your achievements. You are an infinitely complex human being with stories and myths and dreams and ambitions of cosmic proportions. Don't waste time underestimating yourself. Dream big. Use your archetypes. If you're an artist, make art. If you're a visionary, imagine something the future needs. Then join forces with an entrepreneur to make a venture out of it. Use the energy of your archetype to express the true reason you were born. Life was never meant to be safe. It was meant to be lived right to the end. I just want to say <laughs> that this part right here, I agree with 110%. There are inner riches awaiting you in the archetypal domain. Turn the page and dive in. Okay, so I just felt like that was really cool and kind of lets you know like... um what she intended, this book and this deck, how it was meant to be used. So let's begin. Card one. This card represents the persona. How am I being perceived? How do what others think of me affect the situation? So this is again an imaginary reading for an imaginary person. But if you find that a card or the entire reading resonates with you, great. Take it and <laughs> go with that. Here we have the student. Light attributes are humility and devotion to knowledge, openness to lifelong learning. So I'm going to go to the book. How am I being perceived? How do what others think of me affect the situation? So this has keywords for student, disciple, devotee, and apprentice. Suggests not an absence of mastery, but rather a continual pursuit of intellectual development. This person has found a source of teaching, such as a guru or spiritual master, who becomes the instructor and spiritual guide. If this card had come up in the shadow, I'm going to do the shadow, so just so you could see how that would read. Um... It would be arrogance in the pursuit of destructive knowledge, unwillingness to translate knowledge into action. The guidebook says, shadow student usually manifests in tandem with the shadow teacher or mentor, avidly learning all the tools of the wrong trade or misusing the knowledge learned, may never move beyond the student role to develop an independent inner wisdom. It says, look for a pattern of constant learning openness to information as an essential part of your well-being. That's just like the little snippet here that it says for this card. So that's like what you would tell your, your client, your person. So do you notice a pattern of constant learning? Are you open to new information as an essential part of your well-being? This next card, card number two, is Shadow. What am I ashamed of or what do I want to hide and not acknowledge? Here we have the martyr. So this card is in the upright. What is the person ashamed, ashamed of? Learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause, 
And the shadow attribute is addiction to self-pity. This person is the martyr. So let's go to the book to see what it says about the martyr. Has the courage of one's convictions going so far as to die for a cause. Suffers that others may be redeemed either spiritually or politically. Shadow Martyr utilizes a combination of service and suffering for others as a means of controlling and manipulating them related to the victim. So that would be the victim card. So if you go over here, like you don't even need to pull that card. You could just go over it with your client and see if there's anything in there that is resonating. So Shadow Victim shows you that you might like to play the role because the positive feedback you get in the form of sympathy or pity or pity. And then it goes on to say everyone has this archetype. Okay. Um, it says for this card, look for a pattern of giving yourself to causes for the betterment of others, regardless of the consequences. So shadow, what am I ashamed of? Or what do I want to hide and not acknowledge? For whatever reason, I would say that this person is not wanting to acknowledge this shadow attribute of the martyr. They're only wanting to look at the light side. And they're not really, um, they're not wanting to acknowledge that they have an addiction to self pity. That they may be using the martyr as a way of manipulating the situation or controlling other people. I have known people who um, never fall into this. They never fall into this, and especially that victim role, until all eyes are on them. Somebody's point has pointed out something that they did wrong, or they have, you know, done something that they should not have. And then they instantly, you know, do create a situation where everybody's supposed to feel sorry for this person. Um, so yeah, that may be something that the person is ashamed of or not willing to acknowledge. Perhaps they're trying to hide that. Card three, this is the anima. What is my divine feminine saying? If I was thinking only of my happiness, what would I do? Here we have warrior in the reverse. So the shadow attributes, oh, I'll do the light attributes too. Strength, skill, discipline, and toughness of will. Heroism, stoicism, stoicism, and self-sacrifice and conquering the ego. The shadow attributes, which is what this reading is pertaining to. Trading ethical principles for victory at any cost. Indifference to the suffering inflicted on others. So let's go over here to the guidebook for warrior, which I believe this is the last card in the, in the deck. Okay. So this one has a little bit more of um, an explanation than it does on the card. It says, has a couple of keywords, soldier, crime fighter. It says Amazon, mercenary, gunslinger, samurai. In the upright, it says represents physical strength and the ability to protect and fight for your rights. Linked to invincibility, loyalty, and the passage from boyhood to manhood can also be female, as in the legendary Amazon tribe of warrior women, and has emerged once again through women who liberate and protect others who need representation. Mercenary and soldier of fortune are variations on the hired killer who sells his power with complete disregard for the cause. Gunslinger and samurai appeal to your fantasies of independence and self-defense, yet they also carry the historic weight of predatory evil. In their favorable aspect, they all warn you when you're in danger of aligning your might with an unjust or purely self-interested cause. The spiritual warrior pioneered by Dan Millman, Chogyam Trungpa, and others directs you to use the classic warrior virtues of heroism, stoicism, and self-sacrifice for conquering the ego and gaining control of the inner realm. So that's all for the
part of being in the upright, okay? The light attributes of the warrior. It only has a little snippet here for the shadow. It says, warrior distorts or abandons ethical principles in the name of victory at any cost. So what is my divine feminine saying? If I was thinking only of my happiness, what would I do? I would distort or abandon ethical principles in the name of victory at any cost is what this card is saying. Look for a lifetime commitment to courageous battle whenever and wherever necessary. So that's probably tying in here with this shadow aspect. The self-pity, you know, um, playing the victim. And then like, if this person was only thinking about their happiness, they would win at any cost. Okay. The animus card. What is my divine masculine saying? What should I consider? What are my drives or my duties? Here we have trickster in the reverse. So here we have the light attribute, transcending convention, stuffiness, and predictable behavior. But in the shadow, as this card is, manipulating others through duplicity. With this card, I really get strong David Bowie vibes um, from the labyrinth. That's what this card reminds me in the reverse, the shadow attribute. Manipulating others through duplicity. So let's go to the guidebook and see what it says for Trickster. The keywords for this are, um, oops, wrong card. Puck provocateur. In the upright, plays dubious jokes or tricks, makes fun or is made fun of. And now where it says being made fun of, that's like getting other people to laugh, kind of like a performer, like a clown or something. Like that's the desired and intended effect. It also goes on to say, can be either a deceiver who tricks others out of something they're entitled to, or a helper or messenger from the divine. Can be a great ally in presenting alternatives to the straight and narrow path to people and institutions who seek to hem you in through peer pressure and conformism. Now, finally, we get to the shadow. The shadow trickster takes pleasure in misleading and upsetting others. It says, look for a lifetime pattern of either creating havoc or liberating by transcending convention, stuffiness, and predictable behavior. So the divine masculine, what should I consider? What are my drives or duties? taking pleasure and misleading and upsetting others. Um, I could see this card as saying like that they really take pleasure in kind of upsetting others. I could see this like as a comedian, a comedian at a comedy show who brings a lot of pleasure to most of the people in there, but they're like honing in on one person and it's like at that person's expense. I could also see this as, um, I could also see this as like, what are my drives or my duties? They're, they really enjoy tricking people. They really enjoy conning people. So it might be out of conning somebody out of something they're entitled to, but is that really their duty? Mm, I could see that over here can be a great ally in presenting alternatives to the straight and narrow. Maybe they do that through humor. Maybe they do that through satire and they get a, like, they really enjoy doing it. I could see that as coming up as the animus card. What does my heart of hearts want? What are my true desires? This is the self. Here we have child magical. This card says in the upright, the light, seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things, the belief that everything is possible. If this card had come up in the shadow, I'm just telling you how the book reads, pessimism, depression, and disbelief in miracles, believing that energy and action are not required for growth. So that could be like, just thinking, you know, like it's all divine, it's already preordained, it's just gonna happen. 
um, that there's no free will or that could just be like so jaded that they just don't believe in anything. Like nothing surprises them. There's no magic in their life. So let's go to Child Magical and see what the book says. The keyword for this one says innocent. Sees potential for sacred beauty in all things. Embodies wisdom and courage in the face of difficult circumstances. Is gifted with imagination and the belief that everything is possible. For the shadow, it says, Shadow magical child manifests as lack of faith in miracles and transformation. Attitudes of pessimism and depression and as the belief that energy and action are not required, allowing one to retreat into fantasy. It says, look for a pattern of transcendence over apparently negative circumstances from early on in life. So I see this as like at the core, at the center, and then it's like kind of branching out into these areas. So this person probably believes everything is possible, right? Like most of the time I feel like when disappointed when they get jaded you know like that's when these negative things start coming out and I do consider this one as the negative because it's it this one is specifically the shadow this person is the shadow of this okay um but yeah so like the light attributes believing that there's potential for sacred beauty and everything anything is possible and then because anything is possible, I feel like that's why, like, believe that they can win. Like, things are not working out in their way, feeling like the victim, feeling the, like the martyr, everybody's picking on them, having a pity party. And then it's like, okay, well, what do we have to do to win? What do we have to say to get our way? What do we have to do? Um, and I feel like this person really loves learning. And I love how this person is literally a tree. And I believe that trees are magical. <laughs> There's science and research that shows that trees actually talk to each other, you know, and, and they have this ancient wisdom. So it's really cool that this person is being depicted as a tree here. Devotion to knowledge. There's all of these books, you know, just laying at the ground like this person just like soaking it up, soaking it up, soaking it up. And even the, the books you know, on um, the branches are trees and it's just like knowledge is just like expanding and growing. And then it falls down to the ground once they soak it up, you know, and I feel like, like if the, if that was in real life, if there are books everywhere, it would kind of be like the leaves falling on it. And then the books would eventually become the tree too. So yeah, I think that's really cool. So that's how I like to use this deck. I hope it made sense to you. Um, I don't know if I was really explaining it so well because I was trying to do like the upright and the reverse. I don't know. Let me know in the comments <laughs> if that makes sense or if I should just read it the way that it lays. I'm just trying to give you guys an accurate understanding of how the guidebook reads for upright and the reversal so you can make your own informed decision as far as whether this is a deck that you would like to work with. Going over my list one more time to see if I missed anything. No, I think that's it. Okay, so thank you for hanging out with me, Becky the Tarot Card Whisperer. I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know if you have any further questions. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Thanks for hanging out with me, Gems. Bye.